everybody, welcome to Dak Man Productions and welcome to Kind of Hey Rail. Today we have another unboxing video, and again, this one is also from Mr. Muffins. So, I just got done doing a two hour live stream on uh, the Conahay Rail Virtual Open House Tour. So, if you haven't seen that, uh, you might want to go back and watch the replay. Uh, I have three different layouts. Uh, and I have all the trains running on all three layouts at the same time. So I have Conahay High Rail layout with two trains running in opposite directions. And then I have Conahay Rail Traditional O gauge with three trains running at the same time. A trolley and a platform car and then an O27 set running which was my first original set. So that was the first time I've had all three layouts running with all the trains on and running at the same time in the history of Dak Man Productions. So it was kind of cool and I enjoyed the uh, the live chat and the viewer interaction and that was my first on my own sort of like live stream with running trains anyway. So uh, with that being said I'm a little tired so I'm not going to show off some big oversized knife and make fun, haha, I'm not going to use this. But, I got something just as interesting to show you guys. Have you guys seen anything like this? This is a slice of a real rail from a real railroad. They actually really do this, and they slice them in different thicknesses. And the reason why they do this is they inspect the rail uh, that was made randomly for impurities and stuff like that. So they actually do uh, an inspection on the rail to make sure that the profile is correct and everything's correct and engage and then impurities as well. So it's kind of a, a cool conversation piece. And like I said, they slice them in different thicknesses, but this is just one thickness. Uh, I, sh I wanted to show you guys, but yeah, so there, there's something cool to show on video besides a knife. Um, at any rate, so we we'll use our trusty unboxing knife, and as usual, I'm going to tell you a story while I'm unboxing this <laughs> from Mr. Muffins. And once again, Mr. Muffins is a real, actual hobby shop, and he sells uh, quite a bit of O-Gage, he's... A pretty nice guy. I like dealing with him. One of the many places I deal with. I deal with quite a few different O-Gage hobby shops. Not just one, but... Anyway, so we'll open this up. And we are unboxing today the brand new Lionel um, Conrail beer cars that they just came out with. They were announced in the Lionel 2020 Volume 1 catalog. I'm going to tell you a little short story uh, and then we'll talk about you know other things uh, about this. But at any rate, I noticed that all the hobby shops that have the Con or the Lionel beer cars listed as O-Gage. And then I'm looking at the price, and I'm like, there's no way these cars could be O-gauge for that kind of price. They're like $80 cars, there's no way. And for those who don't know the difference, I do have a video called All About O-gauge. But to make it short, O-gauge is semi-scale, and not um, O-scale. Um, o scale means it's true 148 scale. They're your high end models. They're those. They're the ones that cost, you know, quite a bit because you're getting the detail and true scale. So I looked on uh, Train World. I looked on Mr. Muffins, and I'm like, everybody's listing it, listing these as O gauge. So I actually went on to the Lionel catalog. And the Lionel 2020 catalog has it listed as O scale, meaning true 148 dimensions. So I went ahead and bought them after doing some research, of course, because I wanted to make sure of certain things. But 
So for those who are wondering, the beer cars are scale. And we'll go ahead and pull one of these out. Boy, I just love peanuts. <laughs> I know what you guys are wanting to see. You want to see me make a mess, which I'll probably end up doing. Ugh. Peanuts are going to go everywhere. Well, I guess it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> uh, I mean, anything in the sort of the package stays safe, I guess. I'd rather have bubble wrap, but peanuts is due too. As long as they come safe, I guess I don't care. I'll clean the mess later. <laughs> oh, so what we have today is uh, the two different uh, road numbers of the. Lionel Conrail beer box cars. Sorry, I'm a little tired from the live show, as you probably can tell. And uh, so we'll go ahead and do my traditional unboxing the smaller box while I'm right here. And getting back into the um, these Lionel Conrail beer cars. You have to understand something about manufacturers like Lionel. They come up with different terms, terminology, and names for marketing. They might not be the names might not be prototypical to what it's being used for, or but they the different manufacturers come up with names to uh, as a marketing scheme to get people to buy things and. Uh, but I'll explain all that here in a moment, but let's go ahead and open this up. Yay, silicone. That keeps the car dry. I mean, Lionel do, does a nice job of packaging. You can see the, the, uh, the, the styrofoam in here to keep the car so it doesn't bounce around in the package. So they do a pretty nice job of uh, packaging. And then for those who want to run... Uh, with KD couplers, they come with uh, KD coupler adapters. A uh, line I've been doing that for the last couple of years on our scale sized uh, rolling stock. And by the way, as I'm saying all this, I got an actual request from a viewer if I could do a sort of like a, a line out buyer's guide. So when they go to buy something at a train show or hobby shop, they know whether it's O gauge, meaning semi-scale, or O scale, meaning it's true 148 scale. So, these are actually pretty nice. Wow. Ooh. Oh boy. This is not going to make some people happy. Yeah. All right. So it is what it is. We'll uh, we'll review it. I'm really not sure for a price why. All right. So I'm a little disappointed, but it is what it is. Um, they didn't say either way in the cattle, but it's still you know it's still a nice box car. All right, let's get this on the track so we can talk about it. The uh, there's gonna be a lot to talk about. <laughs> All right, so what we have is the brand new Lionel Conrail beer car. Is how they're marketing this. Uh, they listed the beer cars. There's like four or five different road names of these. And the last Lionel 2020 Volume One catalog. Uh, for those who don't know, or may not know, this is a brand new tooling. This is not something they already had, not something they already bought from Weaver, or this is all totally new tooling. So that's the upside, it's a brand new design. Um, and we'll talk about the, you know, prototypical here in a minute. But I'm going to spend a little bit more on the review than I normally do. 
because this is a brand new tooling. I don't know if there'll be other, I'm sure there'll be other YouTube channels that'll be doing a review, but uh, I'm still going to do my own thing and uh, do a, a little bit more of an in-depth review because there's a lot on here that's different than past productions. Alright, so at first glance, uh, I love the car. Uh, there is a lot of uh, high high end details here and we'll point we'll point them out here. So you're you're seeing the, the, the different little neat capacities and the and the uh, uh, I guess I need glasses. Uh, all right, so those are the, that's the brake shoe information that's down there, and uh, there, there's just a ton of graphics details on on this box car. So we'll swing around, and you can see it on the door. Uh, the how the how the latch, which way the latch has got a face for the door to be locked, and there's there's just a, a lot of nice detail on this car. Um, Separately applied ladders, so like that. So, what was my disappointed face that I made when I first opened this up? Well, unfortunately, the door does not open on this car. For the uh, amount of money, uh, you know, that you pay... You would have thought that the, the door would open and function, but it does not. So, this one ranks right up there with the line out 86 foot box cars, which those doors do not open either. But, I will give you the explanation that Lionel gave uh, on the 86 foot box car why they did not make the doors that would, would open. And I'm sure that's going to apply here as well. So, uh, when so many people complained why Lionel would not have the doors uh, function on the 86 foot scale high cube box cars, uh, they came back and said that they would have to make the tracks, the door tracks, so big that it would look unprototypical. And they were afraid that beans how it would have an unprototypical and toy like look that the high railers would not buy them. So uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be the fact on this one, since it is a plug style door, much like on the 86 foot box car. Um, overall, though, I am impressed with the graphics but um, wait there's more <laughs> the other side of this car is pretty well detailed too you have uh, the big air tank you have air piping you have ribs you have the emergency brake actuator a couple other air tanks so they did a pretty good job and I noticed on this model, it does not say where it was made at. Because I was kind of curious if this was made in America, like the Lion scale uh, trains that they make. Or if it was made in China, where the older stuff is being made. Uh, Lionel switched some things around to be made in Vietnam. So, I don't know. And it's not on the box either. So it's kind of like a curiosity thing as to why it doesn't say exactly where it was made at on the label or on the car. So I can't tell you exactly where it was made at if you got that question. But one of the biggest changes that I'm seeing on this um, beer car are the trucks and the couplers. Um, this is not something that I've seen online all before, but it looks like they're going back to the hidden coupler. See it right there? So here's your hidden coupler back, way back here to uncouple it. The, uh, I know my fingers anyway. 
But here's the. Uh, ah. So here's the hidden coupler to uncouple the uh, knuckle coupler. Okay, here it is right there. And I noticed that this car, even though it's scale size, they're saying it will run on 036. But I noticed also that the coupler pivots within the truck. See that? This allows for a tighter swing since it's not fixed. So I don't know how people are going to react to that part of it. I'm sure it'll be mixed feelings. But if you think of it anyway, uh, the couplers are supposed to be body mounted prototypically, but I, I guess it's one way for people who don't have the room for 072 to be able to run scale size cars. And if Lionel is going back to the hidden coupler, or the hidden, yeah, coupler of these, that is a very warm. Uh, welcome there. So that's way better than the thumbtack coupler, which everybody complains about. Um, so I don't see this uncoupling in motion at all. So this is a, a very uh, nice surprise not to have this ugly unseen uh, thumbtack couplers that are always troublesome that either have to put a rubber band around or a tie wrap so I I do like this style these hidden tab couplers I like them uh, I know people who have magnetic uncoupling tracks are going to complain hey I can't uncouple my cars well well, obviously there's a problem because they uncouple by themselves without the uncoupling track. So it does have rotating wheel bearing caps. That's cool. See it? Something that MTH never did. I always complain about. It does have real springs in the trucks. So it looks like they brought back the hidden tab coupler trucks. Thank you. Uh, Lionel. Alright, so here's uh, some close up of the uh, car here. Alright. Here's more detail, close-ups of the details. And as you can see closer how the, the door is uh, molded in. So I'm sure there will be people who won't buy it because the door don't open. Uh, I guess for me personally I would still buy it. Alright, so the question that everybody's probably wondering uh, Did Conrail really have these beer cars? Or these beer box cars? So, as usual, we'll talk a little bit about the history And about the car So, at first, I was thinking that these were 50 foot box cars But they're not they're actually 60 foot. So for those who are not familiar with Conrail, let me point something out. Conrail always had uh, designation models for all their freight cars. So in this case, we'll pan, zoom in here. You notice that this model designation was B65A. And that's a real Conrail designation model. 
So is the Lionel Conrail beer car prototypical? Yes, it really is. This is a true prototypical scale car that Conrail really did have as the model designation number of B65A. So what you're seeing here, and I know people were being were confused, is this a reefer or, or what is this thing? So technically this is actually a insulated 60 foot box car. So let me read you the um, description of this box car. One of the first box cars ordered by Conrail after its inception was the B65A series, often referred to as beer cars. Built in the spring of 1977 by Fruit Growers Express in Alexandria, Virginia. There were 190 of these beer cars and were numbered 376001 to 376190 and were the only insulated box cars built for Conrail. They were classified by the AAR as a bunkerless refrigerated car with a minimum of three inch of insulation on the sides and ends and 3.5 inches of insulation on the floor. It was also equipped with an adjustable loading or towing device. They were painted with the large can opener logo which they uh, wore until they quit were until they quit being used. They came with cushion under frames and a single 14 foot by 10 foot plug door and the interiors were fitted with dual pneumatic bulkheads. These cars were originally built for assignment to a brewery around Syracuse, New York and the website thinks that it was the Schlitz Beer Company. Most, if not all, were eventually reassigned to Coors in Golden, Colorado after the New York brewery was closed. So I'm sure many of you are asking, okay, why insulated boxcar and not a refrigerated car to haul beer? Perishables are supposed to be hauled in refrigerated rail cars. So anything that's perishable needs to be refrigerated. Now beer is not truly a, a perishable per se, but they wanted to keep it at a certain temperature for a certain uh, length of the journey. So the insulated box car was basically a cheaper way of doing that. Uh, not having a mechanical engine or refrigeration unit to keep things cold was a, a cost savings factor. And besides that, if the beer did get warm, it wouldn't be ruined, but I'm sure there will be a lot of people upset over warm beer. <laughs> So that's how they earned the nickname of Beer Car because Conrail purchased these exclusively for hauling beer for a particular beer company. So there's your uh, little history lesson. This is a pretty cool piece to have knowing that um, Conrail ordered insulated box cars, 60 foot insulated box cars specifically for um, hauling beer and he had 190 of them that's that's just a cool thing to know all right so we're going to wrap this up and um if you like my videos and you like uh the dac band productions uh youtube channel make sure you subscribe and 
hit like and um, we'll, we'll move on. I hope to see you guys uh, next video. Goodbye.